Hey guys, Tarkat here, and I'm going to talk about my day one Sentinel League experiences, and then I'll do some maps. I want to talk about my experiences first before running maps, because I think I'm going to cover some stuff which might be helpful for some people. A lot of people are really struggling with the buffed up Arch Nemesis monsters, whether you enjoy them or don't enjoy them. For the record, I do quite enjoy them. Um, I think it's quite funny the fact that GGG made a league where the league mechanic is about empowering as many monsters as possible, making them really, really scary, in the same patch, they made all the monsters really, really scary. So, if your build is struggling, or if, like me, and this is why I did it, you found juggling all the different sentinels kind of annoying, one thing you can do early on while your build is feeling weak, this is not the best strategy, this is just a good strategy while your build is suffering, just fully spec into the Stalker Sentinel. So for me, I just found it frustrating. I was always forgetting to activate things. I'm the kind of person who will run a Metamorph map, leave the map, and be like, whoops, I, I didn't do the metamorph. I'm terrible for stuff like that. So what this does is I've got to go all in on Stalker Sentinels, which is the Sentinel which empowers any kind of monster. It doesn't care if it's white, blue, yellow, or unique. I press it at the start of the map. It will empower 100 enemies. And because I'm not going for the other things and I'm just chasing all the rewards, then I actually get really good rewards out of it. Um, and I can just pump all my upgrades into these guys. I can bind these guys. And it actually feels really fun. I'm actually really enjoying the lead mechanic. Uh, when my build is feeling stronger, when I've got like my full setup rolling, then I'll start dabbling back into going with the other ones. Uh, but I definitely had a few encounters early on where I would pop like a breach, for example, like an expedition, like, ho oh, ho, I'm going to press the blue one and then I'm going to press the red one. And then I'm like, hang on, I'm against like a five mod arch nemesis essence monster. Uh oh, that was a bad idea. So with how I'm playing the league, I'm actually enjoying it quite a lot. Um, now let's talk about Arch Nemesis while doing some maps. Uh, so we're only in yellow, so keep in mind this is from the perspective of uh, someone playing at a relatively slow pace, playing a softcore build, embracing the fact that I'm going to die every now and again, which is why I play softcore now instead of hardcore. I'm actually really enjoying um, the buffed up Arch Nemesis monsters. Now, I am aware that there was, like, GGG being like, dude, we messed up. This was, like, crazy overtuned. And I will admit, uh, while leveling, there were a couple of times where I encountered just, like, silly monsters. It wasn't every zone. Like, it wasn't a case of, like, every single pack I encountered. Um, but I would say probably even in, like, the axe, maybe one in three, one in four. Zoo! Uh, <laughs> oh no. Uh, this is what I'm talking about where like you empower them with a sentinel and then on top of the arch time stuff. Okay. Um, I'm also very weak to chaos right now because I have no chaos res. Ooh. Ooh. Give me a minute. One sec. Um, so yeah, so I, I quite enjoy that little like frantic tangoing. I quite like having to interact with the monsters again, but I'm a weirdo who enjoyed like launch delirium and launch syndicate and stuff. It just suits how I enjoy Path of Exile, so I, I totally get it if people aren't getting it. Um, that being said, the Arch Nemesis monsters are so spooky um, that I've completely changed my Atlas strategy. I'm no longer going to go for a Delirium League. Um, I think Delirium plus this, no bueno, at least not for me with like a scuffed character in the first week. Um, I'm still going to be going full Expedition, um, but all of those nodes that I put into Delirium Instead of going to Lyrium, I'm just investing them to other things. I'll show you like a template atlas at the end. Uh, but yeah, this is very much something where you need to change your plans around the fact that, yeah, monsters are just like spooky, um, which which I dig. So, uh, I empower the monsters. The unempowered monsters beat me up. The empowered monsters beat me up. It's pretty cool. With that in mind, how does um, Petrify Blood feel? Uh, can't be evaded. Probably shouldn't do that one to start on an evasion build. Um, it feels good, I think. I'm not entirely sure. So, because this is the first time I've ever played a Petrified Blood build, when I do get just, like, deleted, I'm like, did I get deleted because of the, like, build that I'm playing? Or did I get deleted because... Monsters just really, 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 really scary now. Um, so I'm still kind of feeling it out. I also don't have, like, a bunch of Chaos Res. I haven't got my Uber Lab. 
Um, I haven't got much regen outside of the 10% from Sab and uh, like a level 18 vitality. So hard to gauge. But for the most part, feels pretty good. And to be honest, all the times that I have died, I'm like, I think I would have died there if I wasn't petrified blood. Um, and also because I'm an ice trap build, the low life damage is letting me freeze things um, more reliably. Um, and that like extra defense of freezing things that I otherwise wouldn't be able to freeze. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think it's, I think it's, I think it's tentatively okay. Um, now one thing which has happened, um, which has completely changed how I'm going to root this build, which is, is a good thing. I'll show you after this map. Um, but yeah, I, I've spent a fair bit of regrets kind of like messing stuff around. For the record, I think this is what I think, if you're playing along with this, um, I think this is like the base tree. Um, I take all of these nodes because this is uh, plus three AoE to Ice Trap, which you kind of need. I feel like this is the, the base that you go for. Um, when you're cutting your life in half, you don't need to chase life as hard early. So I actually trimmed off a lot of life nodes from the build um, to further invest into things which are like, guarantee that I'm freezing enemies. I messed around with having the recoup nodes in the build, out the build, in the build, out the build. I think that's something that eventually you want, um, but spending four points to get 20% recoup compared to spending four points to shore up your crit chance so you're reliably freezing enemies, the freeze is a better defensive mechanic. Uh, I'm actually right next, like, the recoup nodes are connected uh, to these nodes, which is freeze duration and freeze duration. And part of me is kind of like, maybe you go like full freeze duration memes. Um, whenever I see stuff like that, I'm always like, you could just spend those points on damage and then just like hit the thing harder to get a bigger freeze. And then like, if the monster is dead because you did more damage, then you didn't need to freeze it for longer. Um, but anyway, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. Um, but yeah, I'm enjoying the build a lot, actually. I was, I was never really that concerned about the whole patch by blood thing. Um, it's really going to be something that as I get into the end game, specifically when I get into the bosses, because most end game PB bosses are like, and this is my big degen mechanic. And the main weakness of patch by blood is you're weak to degens because you've cut your health total in half. Um, that's mostly where I'll be like, hmm. Do I like this? Do I not like this? Now, one thing that I realized um, literally as the league started was, wow, I actually really need ashes in this build. Um, I completely forgot that the main thing which makes Petrify Blood really, really good is its quality. Because the higher you get the quality on Petrify Blood, the more you prevent incoming damage. So quality is like really important in this build. Um, so that is also another motivation for why I've swapped my Atlas Tree around, so I will be farming Eater of Worlds now. Um, but that's also convenient because I did kind of want to farm Cirrus anyway, and the Cirrus nodes are near that, um, to try and get my hands on the Lighty Belt. So, um, that's feeling good. Now, I said that I need to do, like, a big respec of my tree. Um, why do I need to do a big respec of my tree? So... Uh, anyone who watched my previous video where I was like outlining this, I was like, you know what would be really cool? If I got like a Duresso's Defiance and then I could go like a big block armor thing. I think that would be really awesome. Um, and I think that'd probably be better, but like, you know, getting a Duresso's Defiance at the start of the league, not going to happen. Literally the map I ran before recording this video, a Duresso's Defiance dropped after I just spent like 10 regrets experimenting with random nodes and like messing about with stuff um so yeah so that's really good but it's just like oh no so i now need to farm some regrets which means i might need to do some heist content uh, i think heist is probably the best way of getting regrets these days um i wasn't too keen on heisting this league the literally the only thing that i would want from heist is an ultimate quality arctic armor which would actually be really good, especially if I did get Ashes. So what Ultimate Quality Articama does is any enemies that freeze you get frozen. 
and then you put prolif on it and then it's like one enemy hits you and suddenly the entire screen is frozen which is obviously a very strong defensive mechanic and then if i ended up doing silly things with like freeze duration memes uh potentially that's really really strong question mark um mm. so i need to think about that oh let's just get this going down but you can see even on this like you know i'm doing a decent -ish job freezing i think i've got 53 57 percent crit chance which is like fine it's fine and that's that map. So let me show you some of the stuff that I've got. I'll show you my current gear. I'll show you kind of the Atlas tree stuff I was chatting about. I'll show you some passive skills tree stuff. Um, yeah, so what am I currently wearing at the time of recording? Uh, so I picked up this wand, which is solid. It has adds flat fire damage to spells, which I need. I need flat fire damage to spells somewhere on my gear to activate explosive experts. So that's very nice to see there. Uh, life resistances has some mana, has some evasion energy shield. Um, having some flat mana somewhere on gear is decent if you're running Vitality early. I recommend running Vitality early to smooth out your petrified blood. I plan to eventually drop the Vitality, but for now it's nice to have. Uh, we've got a little bit of Crypt Multi. That's basically the only reason I'm running it. It's just the best thing i found. Uh, this shield's actually really, really good though. It uh, has good life roll in it. It has 50% uh, crit, which is fine, but 41% increased cold damage. Pretty tasty. Uh, this is a really good ring. I need strength. It's got good strength. It's got good life. It's got resist. It's got some rarity. I actually kind of dig rarity early on in SSF. The mana, as I said, I don't need it, but it actually does help a little bit with uh, running vitality. If I, I just happen to pick up mana on a couple of pieces. If I didn't have mana on those pieces, I don't think I could actually run vitality with all the auras I'm reserving right now. Uh, this is just a random five link that dropped. And then I think I threw an essence into it and I hit this. It got life. It got triple res mana. Yay. Um, ring has life, has resist. We just slapped a flat damage craft on there. Another way you can get fire damage, um, you don't have to use abyssal jewels. You can either craft it on a piece of jewelry, have it on a weapon, or have it on a abyssal jewel. Life resistances uh, gives me some life, and I haven't actually crafted a suffix on this yet because I'm one chaos short of crafting. Um, belts regen this 150 energy shield per second while a rare or unique enemy is nearby it's just a really nice way of smoothing out your es uh, in between ghost uh, shrouds really really good and i haven't got the trap throwing mod unlocked yet so this is definitely better than that and this might actually be better than like an extra 10 percent trap throwing speed and then my boots are terrible they are just 30 percent movement speed and they're an armor base which i don't scale at all and yeah in terms of good gear I've picked up, literally the only thing has been uh, this Doresso's Courage, which is amazing, and it's actually a pretty nice roll. So it's got a 3 to 6 cent uh, block roll, and I rolled a 5, which is solid, mid-rolled on the Armor Evasion, and it higher rolled on the All Res. Now, the thing which is a little bit confusing about the Doresso's Courage is, do I uh, drop everything under Coordination... And then come across this way, picking up Sanctuary and Safeguard, and stay with Evasion and keep Ghost Dance, and have Block as well, and just, like, miss out on this Evasion scaling? Or, or, do I go full Armor, and go Divine Shield, and run Determination? I think I kind of want to do that. Um, armor is generally better than evasion because if you're running, like if you're leaning into armor, you can, you can, like, like for example, if you have a load of armor and just a little bit of evasion, then it makes stuff like the gain flash charges when hit and flash swords are more powerful. Um, it just smooths you out for certain types of damage when, especially if I'm running a lot of expedition, which has a lot of stuff like, um, Hits can't be evaded. Kind of irritating. If I'm planning on doing a lot of expedition, I cannot run uh, cold damage. I don't want to be doing like cannot crit and stuff. So going armor would be better on that front. That being said, I could go armor evasion 
and do full spell suppression and block, but then have less energy shield. I don't know. I need to, I need to plan it out. Um, I need to work out how much of a full re-gear I'm doing. And I haven't got the regrets to do it immediately anyway. But it's definitely something I'm planning on going into. So maybe in the next update or the update after that, you'll be seeing the same build, but a block variant. I'm, I could even just like shove this on the build and just be like, hey, I'm just like my normal evasion spell suppression build. But now I have loads of extra block. And if you're confused as to why this is even a good shield, it's the 30% chance to block spell damage while on low life. I'm always on low life, so I get 30% block, 30% spell block. I gain a bunch of auras. And then 20% chance to block attack damage if you've blocked a spell recently. 20% chance to block spell damage if you've blocked an attack recently. So it's like a 50-50 shield, which is basically like instant cap. So this is amazing. But anyway, I'm Taki. Let me know how your league start is going. How are you enjoying Sentinel League? How are you enjoying the new Arch Nemesis modifiers? Have a good day. Bye-bye.